Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the Auto Hustle Podcast with Hype. This is episode 99. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. It's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Very special guest in the building. This is a day one in the building. Introduce yourself to the audience. My name is Ryan Taylor. How y'all doing? He comes all the way professional, giving y'all his government. Y'all know I kill niggas when they come in with the whole government. Copy that. He's one of these guys, though. You know what I'm saying? If you're watching on the E Block Radio Network, he's one of those. <laughs> Let's start it off now. Hit the rundown. E Block Radio Network every Monday, two o'clock on the E Block Radio Network. GFT Radio Network, two o'clock every Tuesday. Wednesday, two one six to blend, twelve midnight, eight a.m. eight p.m. Thursday, WTNUPhilly.com at twelve thirty. I say Podcast Radio Network, ten a.m. on Fridays. THC Media, ten a.m. on Saturdays. Sundays are still wide open. You know what I'm saying, looking to fill in that slot. Get with me, West Coast. Uh, how to hustle seminars can still be purchased. DM me and I can get you all of those situations, marketing and promotion and relationship building. Uh, we did a live Q and a, you know, a whole bunch of different situations. Tap in with me with those. If you're building a brand, a podcast or however you got it, how to hustle live shows, how to hustle live show, March the 12th, seven o'clock at the barn, 4901 Catherine street show starts at seven doors will be at six. Shouts out to my sponsors. Simply in the shade catering. She'll be in there with all the sweet treats and cloud 10 treats will be in the building with all the cloud 10 treats. Uh, tickets are available right now. Tickets are $15. You hit the link in my bio. You scan the QR code. Get at me and I can slide up on you with the physical tickets. Uh, H2H cleaning at H2H cleaning on Instagram only. That is my cleaning company. If you make it worth my while, I will definitely slide. But Ryan is a Philly support Philly situation. Um, roof and plumbing, HVAC, cleanups, cleanouts, carpet and flooring, anything you need, we can make happen. Custom Hustle World on Instagram, Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. That's my clothing line, jerseys, jackets, t-shirts, and sweatsuits. You name it, we can make it happen. Baby shit, too. You know what I'm saying? We like to get your kids from, you know what I'm saying, get them from the cradle to the grave. <laughs> All right. Episode 99. Ryan still has a jersey. He still hasn't sent me a picture of because he still hasn't worn it, but that's a whole other situation. We'll kill him about that later. Um, episode 99. This is the topic community outrage. This is a local situation that we had down here in the 23rd Street, 24th Street area. Uh, we have changed the 23rd Street, 24th Street area. A park is what they call it. Okay, we had a Chinese store that was closing. The niggas have lost their mind about this situation. Talk to me, Ryan. So, if if some people on here where we're from, we're from the Point Breeze area, okay? My bad, Ryan's in the political right. situation. We're from the Point that. Breeze area. He wants to run from mayor um, and all that type shit. <laughs> this, this store, this Chinese store is a, I guess some people want to call it a, I'm not, I, I'm not calling it a staple to the community, but this place has been around since before I was able to go to the store by myself. Um... And, you know, I've had good times there. I've seen some messed up things happen at this place. And, you know, the people are just in the uproar about, hey, bro, I, I heard this place is closing. And and I'm like, okay. Like, you're like, yeah, but you're, you're a committee man, bro. You're supposed to know this type of stuff. And I'm like, my bad. Yeah, you got to throw that out there for the audience, for the people who don't know. Let them know, you know what I'm saying, why this is a situation that you will be tapped into. You know what I'm saying? Give them oh, a little bit well, of your credentials, brother. So I, I said I, he's running for the mayor, but I'm not really playing when I said that. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm not running for mayor yet. I'm I'm still early in my political career. Um, I am a committee man for the 36th Ward, 7th Division. Uh, my job title, I'm also a special assistant for Democratic whip. State Representative Jordan Harris. So I'm in the mix with the politics stuff. I care about my neighborhood. I care about my community. Um, trying to get people that look like me to care more about people that look like me. And there's nothing against this store. Um, the people that own it don't look like me and my brother on the on the other end of the on the other end of the camera. Copy. Um, it's a Chinese store. They yeah, it's a Chinese store. Um, they've made money off of people in my community. Uh, and my, my community, people that come from poverty. Now, <laughs> this store has never given back to the community at all. They ain't never did a book bag drive. Ain't They've never, never gave given free like, shrimp like, rolls, you go, nothing. You go past there and 
hype is, is, is Muslim. I'm not, so I, I celebrate Halloween. Well, when I go there with my trick-or-treat basket, they never gave me any free candy. My point to be said was and they don't right next care to about us. They're, they're, <laughs> Like the stuff I was hearing, like this just can't be right. The hood not the same. The hood ain't been the same since they started buying our houses and, and, and making them five hundred thousand dollars. All right, so copy Ryan soft pedaling this, y'all. Let me jump in here, bro. I don't give a fuck about that Chinese store. Okay, they don't give a fuck about us. Why the fuck do you care about them? If we dumb enough to think every Chinese store in the history of the hood has had somebody named Kim working in this motherfucker, then you are stupid. That is them making a fucking mockery of us because they don't give a fuck about us. If they sold that property and they closing that motherfucker, it's because they turned a profit, okay? Fuck them and that store, all right? <laughs> My whole thing with that situation was I couldn't believe niggas really cared this much about a fucking Chinese store. My mom had two stores in our hood. They closed. Nobody wasn't in an uproar about that. We physically had two stores. We had a store on the corner of 24th Street, around the corner from our block, all right? Nobody wasn't an uproar about that. Niggas damn sure were still running around there to go buy wings from the chinks when you know my mom drinks is way better. But my whole situation is we got too much real shit going on in our community. Like you talking about, nigga, home ain't felt like home in years because home is gentrified like a motherfucker. You go to the park now, nigga, they are having cookouts in the park. Like they, they took the volleyball. Club. They playing, they playing volleyball. volleyball. They having a you having a whole like reunion situation at the park. Like, home ain't felt like home in so long. Like, everything is construction. Everything is priced out. All your memories is disappearing slowly but surely. Like, you ride down the street, you don't even recognize half of this shit if you ain't been around in two weeks. Because you like, when did they put a new house there? And they, like you said, these joints is 500000 These joints is 400000 And we talking on a little block with no parking, a two-hour parking situation. Now everything except our block is two-hour parking. Like, you talking, you don't even got a parking space. You got niggas living in their cars down the street, and you paid a half a million dollars for this house. Like, we want to be outraged about some shit. Be outraged about the fact that niggas didn't see the bigger picture and that they sold their houses for a, a hundred grand that's now been flipped for 800. Or niggas had properties and lots that they just didn't pay no taxes on or didn't keep upkeep on them and let the city snatch them, and now somebody else has got that whole situation. We had too much shit down here in this area where duh we're close to center city duh from our area in south philly you 15 minutes away from every other section of the city like <laughs> okay you go this way you in west philly this way you in north philly this way you down by the stadiums like we always knew that we always knew that this was like a prime situation and why the fuck would you let them get down here they already had packer half that was their area over there <laughs> we ain't got nothing to do with none of that over there but these, these, these are different ones See, they're different. The, the pack of rab ones don't like like these ones coming in. Because they just don't care. Well, nah, these ones coming in, these niggas is from out of town. We had the niggas lived across the street, bro. These niggas was from New York, and they they pay, uh, let's say, like three seventy five dollars for that house across the street from, our, from my mom's. Mm -hmm. and, and nigga, they lived there on the weekend. Like... <laughs> Like yeah. we got too many situations. We got too much shit to be mad about that we were worrying about this fucking Chinese store. I don't give a fuck about this Chinese store. I don't care about none of these fucking stores. They don't give a fuck about me. We've never had a store that had a give back situation to this community. Like you're saying, we never had a book bag drive. We never had no fucking even, you know, I, you said you, I ain't even Christian, but then we ain't never had a Christmas giveaway or none of this shit. Only, Niggas don't even give you no candy for Halloween. Like you said, Niggas only, don't give you a discount. If you come up $2 short, they're not going to let you slide. Only like, black store, only black store, and I, I'm not saying this is the only one for people that's in the community, but to my knowledge, who I deal with is uh is the works, and that's owned by Mar Marvel Connor. You know I'm saying he gets breeze. back Copy that. So every, every time like our office is doing something, he wants to be involved and be a part. I respect that. I love it because I can go get my food that from somebody that looks like me. Like when I was a kid, your mom. And them had the store. Like that was a thing, bro. Like that that was powerful. I, I feel like people seen it, enough people seen it, and like ain't nobody else follow up with it. Because that's a big deal. That's somebody look like you owning a business and they feeding you what you want to eat. I mean, don't be wrong, like the Chinese store is, is is I can't even say it's cool. 
it's it's convenient and it it's, it's not even really convenient because they're giving you they're giving you BS. Like your mom making that food with love. They just just dropped us some shit in some they grease. They don't even know they change. You know this grease yeah. been changed. You know what I'm saying? This is like, the whole situation with that. Like though, like you said, like shouts out to Marv because yeah, it works right there on the breeze. Uh, right there outside the board the barbershop was at. Pre, like anything, anybody trying to do something positive in the community and the situation, I love it, and I will always try to shine a light on it when I can, whatever with the bit that I can with my platform. So definitely, let's not gloss over that at all. The problem when we got these different situations though is we never want to see us succeed. All we do is try to compete with us. And like I said, when my mom had the store, niggas was still going there and getting whatever. Not just you was getting a low main, nigga. You in here getting 20 wings. Like, or whatever. Like, there's been plenty of people that had stores. We had the candy store on 22nd Street. Niggas yeah. was niggas wasn't sliding there because they was just going somewhere else. Niggas always look at your situation instead of being like, damn, that's what's up. Ryan got if Ryan selling lemonade outside on the block, the kids were selling water ice on the block this summer. I came up. Give me three water ice and here go yo here. Get this to the kids. Not saying none of this shit because I'm bragging about this shit. But this is what you're supposed to do. This was an episode that I did with uh with me with Gotti's son. Um, not me, damn. With Mir. I said me. Okay. <laughs> um, I did this episode with him. I think this is like episode ten. Was about the things that the kids get from us that they look at and that they respond to, if they influenced by, and all of those different things. And he said when he was doing like some car washes or something, he said, well, we try to do positive things. We need y'all to support it. We need y'all to back us on that situation instead of when we, then when we ain't doing nothing positive, we doing something negative, then y'all all talk about it. Right. So if ever I see some young boys around the way is doing anything, like if I got it on me, then you got it, youngin. Like, because right. I want you to know, like, go ahead, keep doing it. Because when I was a young boy, I was selling bean pies at the barbershop. I was selling bean pies at the Juma. Me and Boris riding our bikes, and we're going to go hit all of the different spots so we can get these joints out. My cousin had the Islamic store right there on 23rd Street on on, Dick on Reed Street at uh, the park. You got to support these different situations when we got them, but we can't possibly be so fucking mad, outraged, and pissed off about a store or a whole situation that don't give a fuck about us. That strip low main ain't that good. Like <laughs> a little burnt last time I had one, but you know. <laughs> it's a little burnt, a little crispy. You know what I mean? Yeah. First thing I went inside the store and it's just filthy. It's always been like that. Yeah, but I'm like, this is where we at. Like this is where we at right here. Like this is where we at. We to the filth. Ain't no heat in that chump, you know what I mean? It, like it, I don't know, man. It's just it's just crazy how you just you'll look at we have black home barbershops. You look how they're treated, and then you look at this place. You know what I'm saying? Like you just adore this place that's filthy, and they sell food. Place should have been not bad. Should have been not bad for food. But that's especially like especially like right now. A um, couple weeks ago, now at the time that the episode comes out, but you got the situation in Memphis where. You got the five cops that just killed this boy. This is the type of shit we need to be mad about. This is the type of shit we need to be worrying about. The type of shit we need to be talking about. Like, not this fucking store. Like, I'm saying, like, it, it ain't really even so much about the store. It's what it represents. That we in a community. I, I tell people all the time, we didn't come from a diverse community. Our community was 100% black. There was not one white person until that one girl moved in. Her and her sister. Like, <laughs> And that wasn't until, like, 07. So, like... <laughs> Okay, we come from a hundred percent black area where sure. we probably own like six stores, and for it was sure. a horrible job for us for not supporting and uh supporting and encouraging them stores and making sure that them drinks are still here because there ain't none of them still here. The only thing that's still here is the barbershops. Point Bree, no, it's one point Bree used to be black, man. Yeah, the mark point Bree, the market going, everything going. It used to be black, bro. That that, market, this, that, 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 that that was a shitty market. That was the worst market in the history of markets. I ain't been I'm with that market. Going. I'm, I'm not with what's went in this place. <laughs> but, but that was a shit market. That market is like 98, bro. They ain't never had nothing market. in there. This is a shit market. <laughs> It's a shit market, bro. Like, what you think about that Memphis situation, though? So you're politically tied in with all of these different things. What you think about that Memphis shit? I don't really like to do current events on the podcast, but this is like one of them things that like you gotta kind of touch on it. Everybody right. gotta. Um, 
watching that video, man, that uh that turned my stomach. Uh because at one minute we out here like, yeah, we can't keep letting white people do us like this. But this was a, but this was a this was a, a example of literally how we do each other. Like one, it's five of y'all and it's one of him. Now, if it's five of us, it's not that hard to restrain someone without hurting them. Like they kicking, they was kicking him. Kick, stump, punch, beat with the baton. And I think they was low-key mad because they maced each other. And, and you know, a cop don't want to feel embarrassed. And you know what they always used to say? Oh, you made me run? I'm going to whoop your ass. You're not supposed to whip my ass, though. <laughs> That's for the no part. reason. The you're whole situation to. was for no reason. Like, it's, 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 it's disgusting, man. Like, it's this... I, I, I want to go at the training. I, it's just, I don't know. I just feel like these psych evaluations, man, like this has to happen. Like we don't know what these type, we don't know what happened at home. That day. We don't know what happened at home. We don't know what happened on the job. But that right there is unacceptable, man. Like somebody dead, bro. Like he dead. Ain't no, I'm sorry, he dead. Mm -hmm. like, he don't get the, he don't get the comeback. Everything like, and people that got, got sons, bro, like, ooh. It ain't Ooh. even just sons. People who got daughters, like I know. stuff like this. I didn't make. Um, I didn't watch. I didn't get through the video yet. Uh, I just that's was that's too caught cool up. I had too much going on. I'm gonna watch the video. I just had too much going on. By the time we the, this episode is out, though, I'll be and watched it. And the debate in my head is how much of this am I gonna let my daughter watch, my oldest daughter, because I want her to be aware of this stuff. When the whole George Floyd situation happened, she sat there with me, and we watching this coverage. And you need to see some of these protests and these cars on fire and explain to you why all of this is going on. I don't want you to be ignorant to this stuff. I don't want you to just flat out hate white people because obviously this is not just a white situation. This is a, a how do you say, a, this is just a thing that's going on with their whole, with the whole police force. Um, this is always my problem with the people having a problem when people say all lives matter. All lives don't matter. All no. lives are not created equal, are not treated the same. But Proof. we can't sit here scream holler about Black Lives Matter and get lost into the whole situation of what it was about. People got caught up into the organization when nobody gave a fuck about the organization. Nobody was saying Black Lives Matter because they love the organization. They right. were saying Black Lives Matter because they're talking about their life matter and their kids, their mom, their aunts, their uncles, their community, that we all matter. Don't just come down here and do some shit like you did to this dude. Uh, what is his name? Tyrese, what is it? Ah uh, man, it's man, no that's... look. We can't not have my man's name, but we um the situation was not about uh the situation was not about Tyree Nichols. The situation was not about uh Black Lives Matter organization, and the problem has been that everybody has always made it turned it into a that's us doing this exact same shit. Us turning against us and not seeing the bigger picture. You worrying about. All lives matter, and somebody screaming "All lives matter" when these black lives don't even obviously matter to us all. If we watching a thirty minute video, y'all just whipping this man's ass for no reason. Ain't like y'all got a tip said he was strapped and he's gonna go shoot up a school or nothing. How the hell we get the one video of this boy shooting up a classroom and we got forty five cops sitting in the hallway doing nothing? Damn that! And the guy, the, the guy that attacked Nancy Pelosi's husband. Oh yeah, I just seen that that came out too. He hit him with a hammer. They they tackled him. No, we got somebody. We have an active shooter in an elementary school <laughs> who is actively killing kids, and the kids are calling and telling their parents, "Yo, it's going on in there right now." And we got the video of however many cops that was in the hallway. My man is pumping sanitizer in his hand. We got that video going on out here, but this is the same shit that we're doing. Right? Shit is insane. That shit don't make no sense. And like I said, I don't even really like doing current events because I like these topics to be evergreen. But this is the type of shit that we need to be outraged about, not just some fucking local bullshit store that don't give a fuck about right? us. Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> that's it, cash only. This, oh, God. Uh, they, 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 ain't paying, they ain't paying that much in taxes. They take this cash only. Um, yeah, I think we take cash only because we shipping this shit home. Yeah, absolutely. We, we sending that back to, the, back to the land. You know what I mean? <laughs> nice little business with you. We the only ones who don't think like that, though. That's the fucked up part. Hey, man. 
it's rough. It's it's rough. It's yeah. The the whole the whole the whole the whole community is this. And you see original people that's left, but it's like young young the young guys like nobody cares. Like I had an argument with a few dudes. It's out in the corner we're talking, and you know they're like, "Yeah, this boy owe me bread, and I don't get my bread. It's, it's up." You know, I had to a monkey wrench in that. How much bread is it, bro? About 200. So you going, we'll do that for a deuce. Cool. Did you stop the guy from coming in here to take your grandma's house? Everybody got quiet. <laughs> Everybody got quiet. Felt like, felt like the fellow wanted to fight me after that. And I'm just saying, you ready to go take this man out, put your life on the line for two hundred dollars? When you been- especially, especially now when you know it's cameras every fucking where. Everybody got the ring joints out, so you're yeah. going to jail. But you ain't, but you ain't put up a fight to save your grandmama house. Yeah. See, I, I, Fuck I, I, up I, priorities. I, I go to work every day. I ain't out here getting a tax free check. You know what I mean, you know, so they are getting tax free bread. Grandma house should be taken care of. You should keep that. That should be kept. That's fucked up priorities. That's motherfuckers not being. We just talked about this on last week's episode uh, with uh, the, the jewelers. <laughs> um, that's having bad old heads. That's having people not. Uh, that's having people who are not equipped for the position leading you. Because yeah, but that's that's, that's their bad old heads. Just because somebody's the oldest don't mean that they should be the leader. Absolutely. Like, and you gotta have even if you have bad examples to follow, there's always something good out there. There's always a neighbor, a cousin, somebody out there who you can look at and say, This boy's doing it the right way, or this boy's doing something that's working, this boy's doing something that's successful. So let me gravitate more towards that than this because like you said, you look up now and shit, we got like ain't that many of us around here no more. No, nah, bro, it's short. I mean, you know, we got some that some that's no longer with us, we got some that's behind bars, but it was a nice number. It was a nice number that was that was out here, and it's like you don't even see them as a rat. Yeah. They done they done settled somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? Really can't call home home no more, bro. Like it's it's this it's crazy, man. And it, you know, like I I had our hood going crazy about this Chinese, but bro, like South Philly, our side of bro was in the uproar about this store. I had people call me from North Philly. Yo, bro, this door closed. I'm like. That what I'm I said saying. I told my people from North. about the wrong shit. I told you about North. I said, y'all, 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 y'all been sleeping because Temple been treated y'all. But. <laughs> I mean. Now, you know, I, you know, I worked right there. So I seen all of that uh, happening bro. every day going to work. But um, now we're going to uh, switch it up a little bit now and talk about. Uh, you, my man. You got the jersey. Appreciate it. You still never wore the jersey. We still need some photos of you in the jersey, brother. It would be lovely to have some photos of you to do the promotional situation for this episode by the time this one comes out. Just saying. <laughs> I will wear the jersey. The jersey is actually, it, it hangs up at my desk. But I will wear it. I will wear, I will we could take jersey. a picture of it after the desk or something like I, that. I, I, man, we could have been did that. I will, bro, you know, like my life, I'm, 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 I'm jeans and loafers or... Or 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 soup bowl like my, my whole Nigga, stuff everything's altered with me. If everybody is watching, if anybody is watching on the E Block Radio Network, this brother has on white tea currently. He's off today. Okay, I was not off today. <laughs> I have the jeans on. This is my undershirt. <laughs> Head on a collared shirt with, with one of those with, with, with one of them dad hats. You know what I mean? You, you know, little dad. You know what I mean? Like it's it's, it's rough, man. It's rough. But I, I'm definitely gonna I'm, I'm gonna wear my jersey. You know what I'm saying, yes, it's actually the to- Toronto uh, Blue Jays. It's the Blue Jays uh, uh, font. Yeah, copy 50, that. Has 55 on the back. That was my yes, number. I, high I, I, I wore I wore my Blue Jays type of joint. You know what I'm saying I wore that yeah. to Hot Hustle Live Show Part Two. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm a, yeah, I'm I'm gonna throw that on. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's a very nice jersey. Very very fine jersey. Very fine. My we do good work over here, custom. Hustle. Absolutely, I I, um, I approve. I approve. Tell me this now: Do we got any? You got anything coming up on the political side of things uh, that we should touch on before we wrap up episode ninety nine? 
Uh, so we have a we have a we have a city council race and we have a mayor race that's coming. Um, this is this this is interesting, people. I mean, you know, I think you should just tune into who these candidates are, uh, and see what they're about. I mean, I just feel like the part with the election. I feel like uh, we don't really participate. We only participate in like presidential elections, and I'm just gonna be I'm gonna be all real with you. Presidential election is cool, but I don't really know how much Joe Biden gonna do for you. But what I do know is. Your city council person, your state representative, your state senator, the DA, <laughs> the judges, the governor, the lieutenant governor, those are people that matter in your life. Um, and you need to take those positions serious because, you know, if, if you got, it's just everything as far as your home, if you got people behind bars, you got people, like, you, it might be a judge is running. And he might have something against black men from age 18 to 25. That mean me and hype don't count. He has no problem with us. If we do something, you know, a little, little out of pocket, he may be leaning on us. But if you in that 1825 bracket, he may throw the book at you. I've been out of that bracket for a while. So, um, <laughs> this is the thing. We did this episode before. Uh, Shouts out to my man, Big Dan. We did shit. We all had the right to vote. This is why I think we shouldn't all have the right to vote because people don't do their homework on these candidates and shit. They just look go straight in the joint and go, I'm a Democrat, they're a Democrat, let's just vote for them. You got to do your homework on these people. Whether they're Democrat, Republican, or if they're independent, you need to know what it is. Like you're saying, these local situations are how I believe you should have like a tier system for voting. And if you can't get it right with your local elections and those situations, then you shouldn't go up the ladder to start voting for more shit. People would always say like, what is Biden, Trump, uh, Obama, what is any of them doing for you? What they mean by that is are they sending a physical check to their house? No, they're not sending a physical check to your house. It's not about whether you're getting a check from this specific person, because that's all niggas mean. And then when you got the stimulus check, when there was a check from, uh, what was his name, from Trump, niggas just went, oh, that little bit of money was going after I paid these bills. Like, duh, that's what the fuck the money was for. <laughs> um, but... We need to have you educated on what the hell is going on in your local situation so that, like, the next time your grandma's house don't get took, next time you know about paying the taxes, this is why you need to be teaching all this shit in school so that you yes. know and are prepared. This needs to be a class in 12th grade where it's, like, building you up to vote, having you understand the different policies and some of this shit, like, that's going on because you shouldn't just have young, dumb, and ain't paid attention to nothing. When I was 18, mom, who we voting for? Like, that was what the situation was. Yeah, and I and I'm glad you touched on that because like my, my grand when I first moved to my grandma I was like, I want you to move for this guy. So I listened to my grandma, then I you know I did my homework. Well, grandma, this guy been around since the '80s, whatever. He did like one thing. He hasn't done nothing since. I'm not voting for this guy. But why? Because he ain't shit, grandma. I'm just telling you the truth. He ain't shit. He did something that one time, and he hasn't done nothing since. He's been living off this one thing that he's off done. The <laughs> He's this one thing. And I don't even know this one thing was that that good. But he, he did it. It was this one thing. I'm not voting for this guy, grandma. Why, wow, baby? Because he's not shit. Okay? He's not shit. He's just using this job. He, he's using this position. He's using it. He's not even really doing the job. You understand what I'm saying? And that's that's the thing you need to, you know, need to work on when you when you want to go vote for these candidates. Make sure they're gonna do the job. Cause you're Make the sure you know something about them other than they're just a Democrat or they're just a Republican. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, they no, got these no things the called the internet and they got this joint called Google and you can find out anything about these motherfuckers. Why are you Google, on there Google. Googling? You know what I'm saying? It's H-Y-M-P-E. You Google me, all of my stuff comes up. They got photos of me and all of that. I'm pretty you know, important guy these days. <laughs> but... Shouts out to my brother. Like I said, this is a day, he's a day one situation. Uh, I knew this man his whole life. <laughs> Cause I'm older than him. Um, so shouts out to my brother. That's episode 99. Next week is a hundred, y'all. We are oh, before we out. Ooh, this is a good one for you too. When you hear my name, what do you think? Somebody say, yo, you know the boy Hank? What do you say? I almost forgot this. God damn, how I messed this one up with you. What do I say? Yes. Somebody say, yo, you know the boy Hank? Absolutely. Great crowd, great guy. Honorable guy, you got a problem with him? <laughs> I'll be ready to risk it all with a whole suit on.
Yeah, we did. Yeah. <laughs> that boy family. Something, something wrong? That's how I feel, man. I mean, you great guy. I mean, that's come from great people, bro. Can't I mean? That's how I feel. Copy that. Appreciate it. That's episode 99, y'all. We are out. <laughs> <laughs>